I have to say, after finishing the first episode, I was a little worried that I was mistaken in liking it. But nope, second episode is just as good. So it starts out with Subasa and her new baseball friends looking for a place around the school to play. Of course, every space is occupied and the student council is not willing to give them any more leeway with only four members. So they leave that in the hands of their advisor and go shopping for gloves in a scene that's very reminiscent of the guitar shopping scene from k Except this time the girls are more frugal in their purchase instead of getting the prettiest and most expensive piece of equipment. While they're there, they run into Suzuki, who is one of the student council members that denies them access to any part of the school to practice in. They discover that Suzuki has an older brother who plays college baseball, and Suzuki herself is very interested in the game. They try to convince Suzuki to join their club, and she's kinda halfway there, halfway not, but very insistent that she is not going to play. Meanwhile, their advisor finds a field for them to play in. It's this old dilapidated field outside of the campus grounds, and this turns into one of those cliched tropes where you need to actually till the soil and take care of the grounds before you can start playing in it. We've seen this before in some ways from H2, from Ofuri, from Major, from Gurokan. It's a very effective cliche to set up the teamwork aspect of the girls, but a cliche nonetheless. Anyway, while they are weeding the field, Suzuki has a flashback to her childhood. And this is how we learn about Suzuki's relationship with baseball. When she was really young, she tried to play on her brother's team, but she quickly found out that she was not physically able to keep up with all of the boys. But while she was on the dugout bench, she caught the opposing pitcher tipping his pitches, and she was able to relay that information to her teammates. It was from there that she implanted this idea in her head that she was not physically able to play baseball, but she had a high enough baseball IQ that she could still be involved in the sport in some way. If this were a different show, it would preach the merits of someone fulfilling a certain role within a team and how that is a perfectly fine way to participate in a group activity. But Cinderella 9 is not that type of show. It's not about this very adult idea of being a cog in a machine. Cinderella 9 more wants to preach the benefit of giving your best effort towards the thing that you actually want to do. I'm not saying this is necessarily a better or stronger message than being a part of the team, but... This is very much the ethos that this show wants to embody, and it does it very strongly. I have a feeling that a lot of these early episodes are going to be fashioned very much like this one, where we add on a new member of the team, we see what their strengths are, we see where their inferiority complex comes from, and we see how they can be part of a team with no reservations. And I think we're going to get this a lot because I counted all of the new faces in the opening credits. And there's like nine different girls that we have not met yet. If there's anything I can take from the second episode, it's that the first episode was not a fluke. This is a good show that is worth following. And it's entirely possible I'm enjoying it more because Mix and Ace of Diamond are disappointing me so much. And because I kind of have an idea of what those shows are about already. Whereas even though this one is predictable and conventional, it's still very exciting and very good at what it does. Cinderella 9, Episode 2, still very good.